I'm Gabby, owner of the Picker Concept. I'm a big time thrifter and long time garage sale enthusiast, and I'm here to give you some tips and tricks on how to make this year's garage sale trail your most successful one yet. You'll be seeing on the Garage Shop Trail, web trail website and on their social media channels the phrase make money, save money. And so what better way to jump into these tips than to give you an idea on how to price your items. But before I get into that, first of all, I want you to think about what your primary goal is for this year's Garage Shop Trail. Is it to make as much money as possible or is it to clear out as much as you can? Because the answer to that question will greatly vary how you're going to price your items. Let me explain. If your primary goal is to clear out as much as you can, this is really good for people who are um, dealing with deceased estates or moving into retirement homes, if you're moving house or downsizing, or if you simply are recondoing your life and you just have too much that you need to move on, you want to give yourself a much lower price point than those who are chasing as much money as they can. This Having that lower price point gives you a higher guarantee that things will sell and they will be moved on to new homes, which is your primary focus for this garage sale trail. Now, if you have, for instance, a lot of um, similar items, you want to give them all a bulk price. For, uh, for instance, if you have a lot of books, you price them all at $2 or $1. If you have a lot of CDs, you can price them all the same price. This saves yourself some time and energy when it comes to pricing. And you can just make up a sign to pop up saying that all books are $2, all CDs are $1, etc. Um, which means you don't have to individually go through and sticker every single item, which is particularly good if you have a large volume of things you're trying to move on. Um, and it also makes it very clear to customers exactly what the price is. On that same vein, if you have a lot of pro products that are the same price but in different categories. You can always set yourself up a couple of tables and say everything on this table is $2, everything on this table is $1, etc. And it doesn't matter what is on the table as long as it's clearly visible to the people that are shopping. Um, you know that if it's on that table it is $2 and they know that as well. Now another handy hint that you can do is you can pop down to Officeworks and get yourself some coloured stickers and assign a particular price to each individual colour. For instance, you can do um, a red sticker is $1, yellow is $2, green is $5 and blue is $10 and then instead of having to individually write out the price and also write out swing tags, you can just go along, price everything and you're done. You've saved yourself probably 45 minutes to an hour and a half of work because pricing is quite laborious. Now, if your primary goal is to make as much money as possible, you want to make Google your best friend. What I mean by that is you need to do your research. If you don't know what things are worth, how are you going to know what to price them at? So when you're doing your research, you want to be looking for not not always the exact thing that you have, but similar items work. So you have a comparable price that you know what the retail value is. Obviously, at a garage sale, no one expects to pay retail value. And in saying that, you probably can't charge a retail price. What I would do is go to about 30 to 50% of the retail value, 50% for particularly rare items, 30% for everything else. Um, and that way you're still making a substantial amount of money, everyone's getting a little bit of a bargain and you have more of a guarantee that things will sell. I'm going to give you an example of something I have and how I would price it. So I have this very large mid-century ceramic big cat. So for those of you that know these are highly collectible, if you don't, all of the big cats, for instance, tigers, panthers, and even the smaller ones that sit on your mantles, um, cheetahs as well, are highly collectible, highly coveted items from mid-century lovers. And they're really hard to find in part because, you know, ceramic breaks. So a lot of them have been cast away to landfill. These, I did some research through Google because they're really hard to find. Um, and I, what I found online is that they do sell for anywhere between 2,000 to 2,500 US dollars. So that's 2.8 to 3.4 Australian dollars. So that's quite a substantial amount of money. I don't expect to get that amount of money at the Garage Art Trail, even as a business. So what I would do is I would price it at least 50% lower than the retail value. And I would give myself a little bit of wiggle room to play with. So for instance, if I know that I want to get 
a minimum of 1200 for this piece I would put a little bit extra on it and that gives me and the people coming to my sale room to barter and negotiate so I would chuck you know 1250 1300 on and it gives us that little bit of space where we can negotiate together to find a price price that makes us both happy I've still got the guarantee then that I have the room to make the money that I want and they're getting a little bit of a bargain in the process keeping in mind that this is an extremely rare piece so um, for rare items that you have I would definitely go around the 50% mark because they're highly collectible on that same note if you have rare items this goes for people that are um, trying to clear out as much as you can as well if you're trying to clear out as much as you can and you have rare pieces you can still put that 30 to 50 percent on it that's absolutely fine but you need to put photos up on your garage sale trail listing so people can see what you have and that gives you a point of difference and it gives them incentive to come to your sale because you have that rare piece that they're looking for um, and once they get here there's lots of other things for them to buy so they can pick up a good bargain along the way as well I hope that this has been helpful. I will be coming to you across the next couple of weeks with more tips before the Garishal Trail on November 21 and 22. And I look forward to speaking to you then.